come on in Pull up a chair and tell me how you been We're fixing to sing and Guy is singing the lead So if you would sing the harmony But if you can't sing in tune Well that's okay because we can't hear you just don't forget your decaf on sweet tea And sit up straight and sing along with me Well, come on in, come on in Pull up a chair and just tell me how you've been Just don't forget your decaf on sweet tea Then sit up straight and sing along with me Come on, y'all. Sit up straight and sing along with me. Hey, 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 hey. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy, happy Tuesday. It is 10.03 a.m. And let me just tell you, we have had all kinds of technical difficulties this morning. Uh, I had guy going on. His guy's got an incredible rig at his house, high speed fiber, just like me. And he set it down. And every time I would talk, I would hear a bad echo. And it wasn't coming from headphones. Anyway, let me just tell you, God is alive and He wins, even if He had nothing to do with any of that. It's just technical stuff, you know. Sometimes we blame the devil on stuff that just ain't his fault. Besides, like I told you, he's not omnipresent he can't be everywhere at once so it probably wasn't the devil messing with my stuff it's just technical difficulties or one of his imps i'm sure he's messing with bigger people than me today <laughs> hey everybody i'm so glad you're here i'm excited we've got a lot to talk about guy penrod is here and we're gonna move to that screen right now hey welcome guy penrod everybody hey guy hey, uh oh hey, hold on guy I can, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Here we go. Here All we right. go. I forgot about these. Hi, guy. Hey, buddy. Oh, there you are. How are you, man? I'm good. Aren't we just technical wizards? Oh, right? man. I tell everybody, when I get this figured out, I'm quitting. <laughs> because it is a lot. To, but this morning, it just something went weird, didn't it? Well, we have all these important things to say. I so. know. We you know, gotta, my dad used to say the devil's in the sound system, so maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I heard you saying we blame the devil, though, sometimes for stuff that's not his fault. I know it. I know it. Like, like he's got time to mess with us. Okay, let yeah. me fix one more little thing here. All right, bro. Settle down. Talk amongst yourselves. All you Mark well, Lowry lovers out there. stretching so far. In Hello. Hi. There you are. Hello. All right, we got yeah. some big news, don't we? We do, yeah. Well, let we me tell them how this... I want to tell how it. I got involved in this. About a month ago, was it, you called me? Yeah. Yeah? And uh, and yeah. asked me if I wanted to do a uh, be a part of a concert for Liberty University, which Guy and I are both alumni of. Is that the right word? Alum or alum? Yeah. Anyway, we went there, and um, I graduated in 1980. When did you graduate, or did you? Yeah, I did in 85. 85, so you came along quite a bit later than me. But I can remember a guy when I was still hanging around Lynchburg, because I, I based out of Lynchburg probably those years, and he was one of the smoothest, oh, you know that. I mean, even back then, his voice was like butter. Everybody said that. Now, he didn't have that ungodly long hair back then, but he, uh, <laughs> First Corinthians eleven fourteen. but uh, he did have a sweet spirit, and, uh, and I've always loved Guy Penrod, and I know you do too. Let me pull up the comments. We've got 2,383 people with us today already. That's a large congregation, and Maxine says she loves Guy. Mary loves us both. Uh, hello, good morning from Brenda Higdon. She says, hi, guy. Uh, anyway, they're all coming in. And good. we want to invite you, y'all. We're excited about a free concert. It should say it on the little thing below, but it doesn't. 
at Liberty University for the homecoming, the 50th year of music. And they're going to have all kinds of people. In fact, I've got a little header we can run above us. It's, it's hosted by Guy Penrod and Meredith Anders, Andrews. And it's featuring, I'm reading as it is, ticking above our head. Isn't that cool? I figured out how to do this. Featuring Mark Lowry, Jody McBrayer, which Jody, me, and Guy, and a bass singer. We're going to try to find a bass singer. Hold on. David McKinney, Justin Kinsel, and more. So it's going to be a night of music. It's free. If you live near Lynchburg or want to drive in, uh, you need to get your hotel quickly because that is homecoming weekend. Mm-hmm. What do you have to say about all this guy? You know, it's exciting. I am a, an alum as well of Liberty and came in 81. Um, I, the only person I knew there was Dr. Falwell. He spoke at my dad's church and uh, being a good dad, he had me sing beforehand, hoping for something to happen. And Dr. Falwell stood up to speak and he said, young man, if you'll commit to me before the service is out today, to come to Liberty, I'll pay for your school. And my dad quickly jumped to his feet and said, he agrees, he's coming, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so that's how I went out there and uh, fell in love with the place. You know, those years was were quite different than they are now, but just loved it, loved Dr. Fowell's vision, loved the school uh, all the way through these years. Met my wife there, we got married there, Dr. Falwell and my dad and her dad did the ceremony and it's stuck so far, 36 years. And uh, wow. when they called me to say, we'd love to have this event, uh, the first person they said, "Do you would you call Mark Lowry and see if Mark would be a part? So they they were afraid to call you, I think, is what the bottom line is because you're such a big star. Oh, please. I could call you because I know things. So <laughs> I called you. And to his credit, he quickly said, I would love to be a part. Well, so we are planning a great night. It's going to be all alumni on the stage. It's yeah. not going to be any of the uh, current student body or, you know, helpers. We call them ringers, don't we, Mark? No ringers. Uh -huh. So it's all alumni, and we're celebrating uh, the fact that Liberty University has been putting musicians and worship leaders and orchestrators out into music for all these years. And so it's going to be a great night. It's at Thomas Road. We seat 4,500. So if you don't get them quick, we're going to be out because well, we expect. To I don't full. know. I think you just show up, don't you? <clears throat> you do. You don't need a ticket. No, it's a free event. It is during homecoming weekend, like you said. So if you there's going to be a real crowd there there the student body on campus now is over 15,000 so. but here's the thing guy i think i there's a football game that day too right yes there is well no the football game is saturday and we're the having the conference friday night do we have anything else competing with that i mean i think that i think we have room for all my people to show up we do. We have, if you're watching me, we have room for you. Don't think you won't get a seat. And if you can't get a seat, well. Uh, you can I'm, sit on the stage with us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that would I work. Probably. Yeah, why not? Well, I, and, I, there, stage. and it's a, it feels like it's bigger than 4,500 to me. Maybe it is. I, I'm not the best at guessing. But it's going to be at the Thomas Road Baptist Church. Um, and it, it, that's easy to find. Just Google it in Lynchburg, Virginia. It's at 7.30 p.m. on Friday, October 8th. And they were a little late, I think, getting starting advertising this Don't is what I've heard. So I wanted to get on here today and let all of you know because you matter to me. And this is a free concert. And if, you, if you're an hour away, get a friend to come with you, drive an hour, have dinner somewhere, come see us, and then drive home. That's what I do. And I'm 63. I'm old, too. How old are you, Guy? I'm 58. And you already have how many grandchildren? <laughs> I have three on the ground and one in the hopper, all oh. girls. Oh, really? Isn't that crazy? After all the boys you had. <clears throat> yep, we oh. have the boys. Boys are having the girls. All right, tell us. 
go down the line. How old is the name and oldest and w- what they're doing? Da, 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 da. Fill everybody in. Okay. My oldest is Tyler. And in fact, on Thursday of this week, just a couple of days, we're loading the f- family up like the hillbillies did and going to Omaha, Nebraska, where he's going to marry his fiance, Alyssa Brown. So they're getting married on Sunday coming up. We'll all have a big time, and then we're coming back home and getting ready. But Tyler and Alyssa live in Lynchburg. He works for Liberty University in their video department. He puts together commercials and video content for them to use. Mm -hmm. And um, that's my firstborn. Second is Logan. And excuse me, I'm burping up my breakfast. (laughs) Logan is married to Brooke, and they have a beautiful daughter named River, River Sage. And she is just the most gorgeous. As I'm a bad granddad, I should have pictures for you to see already. And how old is she? She's pushing a year. She's almost a year old. Okay. Well, what am I saying? They celebrated her birthday while I was on a concert somewhere in West Virginia. So she is a year old. Okay. And uh, and they live here in Columbia. He works for uh, a tech company here. And then... My third born, Joe, married a sweet girl from Wisconsin, as did I, uh, named Caitlin. And they have a 10-month-old, 11-month-old named Gwyneth Kate. She is so adorable. So that's my second. And then, uh, or my third son, he works in missions with um, an organization called Every Nation. And they start churches on college campuses. Wow. So they're doing great. He's a real, he loves people and he has a gift for bringing people into the kingdom. Mm. So proud of all of them. And then Jesse is my fourth. He's married to Graceland. They live here in, in Columbia and they have, uh, Sayla Grace, who is our first granddaughter and they're pregnant with their second. Wow. And she's, uh, on due, I think December sometime. Isn't that great? Then we have Levi who is at Liberty. Um, he he's a senior in the music department, sings with LU Praise, and he met his sweetheart. They got engaged about a week and a half ago. Wow. And they're getting married in June. So that'll be my fifth married. And then the sixth son, Grayson, is at Liberty as well. He's a sophomore, majoring in uh uh religious studies or evangelism. I can't, I can't remember just biblical studies. I think is what it's called. And, uh, he's doing great. Having a blast. My seventh son, Zach is a senior in high school here and he's homeschooled. We've got six grads and he'll be our seventh, um, through our homeschool. He plays football on one of the local teams here and, uh, basketball. And he's about six, six, almost six, seven, just, all of them have outgrown us. And then we have my last, but definitely not least, my sweet daughter, Lacey. She's 15. She's a beautiful young girl and a sophomore um, in school, plays volleyball and basketball. She's almost six foot tall. Um, it's crazy. So, uh, well, mama's six, two, you're six, what? About like that. Six, two, six, three. Wow. And did, all you, right. did, did you tell your boys you tried eight times and finally got it right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially. Although I tell people, I pray for the poor old guy that gets her because my goodness, she's had eight men in her life. You know, how, how is one guy going to compete with eight? So oh. if he gets through the gauntlet of all the sons and he gets to me, he's probably a pretty good old boy. <laughs> Oh my goodness! All right, that's quite a list. I mean, I'm I'm impressed that at your age you can remember all that. Hey, come on! <laughs> Fifty-eight. I heard the belch. That's the first sign <laughs> when you can't stop the belches, and you know what's next. Oh, Just comes Lord. with age. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I um, let me see what they're saying. Susan Odell says I got to go for an infusion. Oh, Susan, God bless you. She's got to go. Uh, April says we are two of her favorites. Uh, Dina Kilpatrick, 
uh, talking, Beverly Hanson, Carolyn McGinnis. How many people we got listening? 3,023. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you share this so all your friends, especially if they live in the Virginia area, can hear about this free concert that Guy and me and Jody McBrayer and David McKinney, a lot of alumni from Liberty. It's going to be so much fun. It's Friday, October 8th, 7.30 p.m. So share, share, share on YouTube. Would you subscribe and ring the bell and like the video and all that kind of stuff? And uh, so, Guy, what else is going on in your life? Now, you're doing solo concerts like I am. Uh, you do, uh, you have a band. And you, right. sing, you sing hymns. Sing a lot of hymns. We, we mix worship songs in there. And What's one of your favorite hymns that you sing? You know, one that's just ringing my bell right now is Before the Throne. If, are you familiar with that old hymn? Yeah, uh -uh. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. The second verse is what rings my bell. Yeah. Do, is, is it okay to do this? My Lord, yes. Sing. So, when Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. He punished him and pardoned we. <laughs> is that, you know, that is... Theology. There's a summation, oh, there is such a summation of theology that is foundational to our understanding of our faith in order to grow in that one verse, you know, because yeah. because we know that Satan's called the accuser of the brethren. So when Satan tempts us to despair, how mm -hmm. does he tempt by accusing us and tells us of the guilt within? And he's a good deceiver because he mixes it with some truth. And we all know that that in our flesh we have guilt. So he piles on that. And then he, he always goes above. And, you know, that's one of his weaknesses. I think he overplays his hand. Yeah. So uh, he tempts us to despair. What do we do? Upward we look and see him there who made an end of all my sin, Jesus. For... Uh, uh, he made an end of all my sin. Uh, oh, why is it I forget lyrics unless I'm singing them? So we'll sing it again. It, and see, when Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin. I, I like that, that, that three, I always say this in concert, but it's three little words with three little letters. And they're the size words though, that only God can use, right? Emphatically. So I love the, the, the theology right there. He made an end, E-N-D, e of all, A-L-L, -L, my sin. Yeah. End he ended all. all. And the, the theology there is, is strong. And I think Satan's been good at messing up Believers, I tried to say this on your show I did the first time back right. when we were at vocal band reunion, and it didn't come out right. But 
he's he's at work in the church i think even more than the world because the world unfortunately if they don't have jesus it's just dead men walking so they're gonna do what comes natural as do we uh, in the flesh and it's just behave fleshy and the only way we we can overcome is through the blood of the lamb so we know that and the word but, of our testimony and of our testimony that's right so the 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 work he's done in the ch inside the church is to convince us of who we're not and so we we start making an agreement uh, with all the the who we're not part That's instead good. of who we are in him and so he uses condemnation he uses accusation to cause uh fear uh worry doubt you know and out of all those things spring all kinds of problems so the the reality we have to to get into our head is all sin and you know i i joke and say in the greek you know what all means it means all all sin is already paid for all of it there's not a sin you're going to commit that hasn't already been paid for by mm -hmm. jesus and the proof in that is just to think a logical thought where were all your sins 2000 years ago they were in the future and one of the the things the devil's used to beat us up with is this this uh conundrum that we live in of we are righteous as far as our standing is concerned with god but sometimes our behavior is not righteous in our flesh we still sin so what's the common denominator to cover all of that well, it's not covered, first of all, it's paid for. And and it is the fact that it has already been paid for. But one of his effective lies is to get us to live in a state of being conscious of sin all the time. But what we should be conscious of is the goodness of God and his work through his son Jesus having delivered us. We are not uh, victims. I love this quote. We are victors right. because of his his uh, uh, victory. And won. you can't do it. He has to do it in you. Yes. Because you're, not, you're yeah. a dead man walking apart from him living in you and doing it. Let me ask you something. I, yeah. You can uh, The devil can also use sermons. Oh, you know, yeah. he doesn't just use our sin that easily besets us or like I used to hear, and I've had, I want to talk to you about this because it just popped in my brain. Remember how we are, I've always heard that we come from original sin? Have you ever heard that? I've heard that, right? Well, no, we don't. You're we right. come from yeah. original virtue. We were infected with sin, and his blood is the antidote. I love how some, some parts of Scripture set it up as, uh, as a judge. God's the judge. Jesus was the sacrifice, and that's all true. But I also love when it's... when. He's the great physician, because I think sin is more of an infection than anything else. I think, uh, and it's got to be rooted out. It's got to be repented of, all those things. Uh, and you got to turn, but that's really all you do. I mean, Jesus has to do the rest, or there was no need for Calvary. But it's, He did it, all. He did all. And again, when you say all, it means all. All we have to do do if there is if you can describe it as do is receive we receive his gift he did all the work and the the further uh statement that i love in that in that verse two of that hymn before the throne is for god the just okay first of all let's just make it clear he's the only just being in the universe the godhead is and so it doesn't matter if if you excuse someone's sin or I excuse someone's sin, we don't have the power to excuse it. God does. He is the only just being in the universe. If for God the just is satisfied to punish him and pardon me, he punished him and pardoned me. I think one a real great hinge pin to, for us to grow in, in Christ is the reality that God is satisfied. He's not mad at you. Yeah. You didn't accomplish the, the deed in the first place. Jesus did. And he's pleased with Jesus, is he not? Yeah, and he's crazy about you. 
Therefore, he is pleased with you. You are clothed in yeah. Jesus. And how rude not to agree with him. Yes. I am. I'm clean. I am worth it because he said so. What makes something worth it? Someone willing to pay for it. A Picasso is an ugly painting to me, but it was worth millions to somebody. And my worth is not in my worthiness. My worth is in Jesus who said, I want you. I love you. I adore you. You're my image on legs. His heart skips a beat when he sees you coming. It's like you do when your grandbaby shows up. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think your love for your grandbaby, it, it's a broken image of the love God has for us. The only reason you know how to love that grandbaby is because Jesus is loved. You know, Jesus taught us. That's he right. loved He loved children too. That's right. Anyway, hey, I got a question for you about that all word. You said all means all. Okay, there is a scripture that says by one man, all fell. Adam, right? By one man, Jesus, all are redeemed. The problem with that verse is you can't unsee it. So your, your question is, does it mean that everyone is redeemed? Uh, yeah, that's what I would ask, and I've not found anyone who could answer it. Well, let me answer it this way. Yes, in the sense that everyone is redeemed, but not everyone is going to receive it. The sin of unbelief, not believing, is the only one that will send you to hell. Mm. And we were taught that, right? Right. Sin of unbelief. The fact is, the redemption is complete, and all have been redeemed. But not everyone receives the gift of Jesus. So plain, that, the, so plain the devil. Okay, go ahead. That, I'm sorry. That's no, no. That's consistent with the question we all know we're going to be asked. The only question that's going to matter, uh, really, is by God asking you alone, without grandma or grandpa or the preacher, or nobody there with you. Hi, guy. What did you do with the gift of my son Jesus? That's the only question that's going to matter. Well, so it's it, not the only it, question that will be asked. He's going to say, no, did you visit me in prison? Did you feed me? Well, did you clothe me? That judgment, though. That's, huh? at the Bema, that's at the Bema seat judgment, where the Christians are, are talking about the things they did, and they're huh. rewarded, and so forth. I'm talking about, you can't get to the Bema seat judgment before, unless you come through the great white throne judgment. So that's my point is, is with regard to will everyone receive the redemption Jesus bought for every man? No, unfortunately. And that's why we have narrow is the gate that leads to salvation. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. Many there will be a find it. Jesus says of himself, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. There's your stumbling block. When you hear Jesus is a stumbling block, that's your stumbling block right there. The, his work is is exclusive, and you can't get through there th to through Muhammad or Buddha oh, no. or anybody else. You come through Jesus and His work alone. So my point is, with regard to through one man all have been redeemed. The uh oh, you froze. They have to receive the gift. Right. It's a free will gift. Okay, you froze a minute, but I got we got most of that. <laughs> hey, guy. Um, so we're gonna have this concert, and we're gonna sit and talk like this. I hope at the concert. You know what we're we're gonna do though? The, I, they've already sent me what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do pivot on your good foot, and I'll do a short version of that because that happened while I was at Liberty. When uh, mm -hmm. you, you you were you around at that time? No, because it was night. Yeah, uh, 19, I'm there in 81. 81, yeah. 1977. And then we're going to sing He Touched Me, Me and You, and Jody McBrayer. And we're going to try to find a bass singer out of the audience. We're just going to pick one at random. And we figure if he's no good, we'll turn his mic down. But it looks better <laughs> to have four. And <laughs> I agree. And, and uh, so what, what's in your future, in your upcoming next few days, weekend or so? Where are you going to be? Yeah, we're going to be in Omaha, Nebraska for our wedding that my boy is going to be uh, getting hitched, my oldest. 
to uh, his fiance Alyssa Brown in Omaha. So the whole family's heading up there and going to celebrate with him. And then I think the next concert thing I do is in Lynchburg. That concert we're talking about on Friday the 8th of October. And then I go over to Branson for a conference at the Mansion Theater. I always love going over there. Yeah. And then Tennessee back home. That's a fun and theater. Yeah. So we've got some things going. It's a, it's interesting days for, you know, doing live events because the, the COVID uh, scare and the variants that are going around are causing, you know, some issues with regard to having events just right. depends on where we're going. But, uh, God hasn't left us hungry one day in my life, which is, yeah. You know, I count, I've always said, if you've got clean sheets to sleep on, a roof over your head, and in Texas, air conditioning, that's just as important as a roof. And you can eat any time you want to eat. You're rich. Yeah. I mean, you're rich. What else do you want? And a lazy boy, I'd say five things. <laughs> <laughs> and a tractor. You, you got to have a tractor. Yeah. Just, How often do you get to... Now, you're about to be an empty nester. Yeah. That's uh that's an interesting space and we are we're kind of going through I don't know about the anything about a midlife crisis. We never really had a midlife crisis. But if there is if this is kind of how it's defined, it, it it's a tough thing when you you know used to 10 around the table and now oh. you got four. And Angie's having a hard time bringing the, the meal sizes down. We're still cooking in an iron skillet that's, oh, about that big around. And uh, she's putting it down in front of just four of us. So. Well, tell her to watch Brenda Gant. Brenda Gant. Okay. Brenda Gant on Facebook. She t shows you how to cook uh, with what you got for however many you got. You know, I, 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 everybody watching right now probably knows who she is except you. She... Let me tell you her story real fast. She's a little lady in Andalusia, Alabama, whose husband died. She said, Lord, please let me do something that will bless people. Isn't that a great prayer for yeah. old people to pray? Let me do something now that I'm retired to bless people. Well, she made a video of how she makes biscuits to teach the girls in her church how to make homemade biscuits. It went viral. And oh now my. she has 2.5 million followers on Facebook, <laughs> and she makes she makes different things and talks about Jesus and it, I mean you can't help but watch her and she God answered her prayer. Oh, isn't that fabulous? Isn't that a good story? That's a great story. I mean, it's kind of what you're doing sitting there and well, I guess Houston today. You in Houston? I am. I'm in my bedroom slash studio slash office. See, I got my green screen so you don't have to see that I don't make the bed. <laughs> you can just roll up a creek from some Great Smoky Mountains. From Look wherever. Or I can go to a beach. Watch this. What in the world? Watch this. We're going to go to the beach now. We're like old people here. Oh, that's my backyard. Hold on. Wow. That's a pretty cool backyard. Is that a pool? You have a pool? It is. You need to come. Or we can be in a country church. Hey, that's cool. Isn't that cool? I just feel like something good, good is about to happen. happen. Hey, people are asking us to sing together. Let's show them why we can't. Because the internet is just a little bit off. Ready? Here we go. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its See, way did it work i don't know it felt like we were together me and you but <laughs> ask look at your screen see if those people are telling us what i'm are we gonna together? say let's find out please greet me from the philippines hello sunshine okay. pearson over there in the philippines yeah hello uh, let's see uh the best gv group can't count the amount of times who's this lauren brooke vaughn I've seen the two of you in my 25 years. Can't hear y'all sing Jesse Taylor. Oh, can we hear y'all sing Jesse Taylor? No. Ooh, that's a talk. <laughs> well, not just that, because it, it's impossible to sing together on the internet. 
All of those videos you've seen of a lot of people singing on the internet, they're all recording it individually. I have a tech company now and I'm going to fix that. Fix it, please. For me and you, we will we'll debut it right here on your show and I'll get my my uh, tech team together and we're going to fix this. Okay, and I want you to add one more thing to that. All right. That the internet will be a, 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 immediate and that you can add thousands of little uh, pe people singing with you like all these people right now we have 3137 people it, usually i have an average of 12 to 1500 when i go live by myself but you have brought in right. a bigger crowd and uh but i would like them to be able to hit a button and sing with me i'd hear them we it'd be a choir yeah invent that and you'll never have to sing again well, want I, I love singing, so I know you the do. Problem is all the business around it. I think you've hit a lick there if, if by by hanging in one place and doing it. But we do have to fix this. So it is, yeah. it's a pretty big problem when it's the whole internet. But you know, I can do it. I, I'm telling I you, hope I, you can. Because me, we're gonna fix this thing. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Well, cool. Guy, can you sing just a little one more something for the people before we leave? Anything that's on your heart, sing. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free you know guy that is the song when i'm alone that comes out in me all the time i don't, it used to be well satisfied i don't know why but now <laughs> I, the older i've gotten that kind of thing oh i love that song i was it's, i know the lord had you sing that for me and i appreciate it you mm. remember thank you so much you remember uh, being on the bus with Gloria and Bill, and and uh, she said to us one time, I think you were sitting right there with us. We were all up in the lounge going somewhere, you know, and she was having a moment, which she had many of, and thank God, you know. Mm -hmm. She said, kids, and she was crying, and she said, you know, I'm coming to the realization that we only pray two prayers. Help me, help me, help me. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And so I think when she said that, it it pulled that old song up in my heart, and I sing it all the time. Oh. It, because it's, you know, that's the crux of the whole deal. What's thank another you. one right now that you hear coming out in you when you don't expect it? You know, it's one that my dad had me sing as a little one, five years old in a folding chair at the church he started in Las Cruces, New Mexico, dirt streets in the town, I remember. And it it was something, obviously, I didn't understand at five years old. I didn't at 40 years old, but I'm starting to understand it now at 58. And it's like the woman at the well I was seeking for things that didn't, could not satisfy. But then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Yes. Bread of heaven, Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Wow. Isn't that? Yes. Oh, and I pray, Father, I just pray right now for everyone in attendance here and all of the many, many needs that are represented in this live stream. Mine. Mark's needs, 
all of the needs of our brothers and sisters. We bring them before you. Mm. We are people of need. Our need is ever before us. But Father, help us in this moment to focus on you, mm. the need filler, the need fixer, the need provider. <laughs> And we do lay down our heavy burdens at your feet. Mm. And we do take your yoke with, that is easy and your burden that is light. We cast them on you. And we thank you that we are victors because of your victory. We are healthy because you bought it. By your stripes, we are healed. Yes. We are whole because you have made us perfect in your sacrifice. Mm. So we stand perfected. We stand provided for, like my brother said. We stand clothed and in our right minds. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. And in this day where the devil is roaring, we know greater are you in us, Father, than he that is in the world. So I do bless my brothers and sisters today in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak strength and life and wisdom and peace and love and kindness and patience, long-suffering and victory over every one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Provision, provision, provision. May we minister out of the overflow of the understanding that you've done for us mm. to a world that's dying and in desperate need of you. In Jesus' mighty name, we Jesus. declare, leave it and receive it. Amen. Amen. Have you ever been accused of being a preacher? <laughs> I have, actually, yeah. Have you ever been called to preach? I have, and I'm ordained. Oh, Brother right. Hardy. Yeah, you remember Christ yeah, Church? Sure. Yeah, I went through their ordination, ordination school. Of course, I had a degree from Liberty and Bible. That doesn't make you a preacher. But, right. Um. Well, I've been accused of it too, but I've not been called. Yeah, I, I tell yeah. them there's too many people preaching who've never been called. We don't need another one. But I, agree. I do love talking about him. Yes, sir. Me too. I think it's because he's so stinking interesting. It's not that I'm so spiritual. It's just every time I turn a corner, there's a diamond. You know? That's a good way to put it, yep. All right, y'all, I love you all. Thank y'all for tuning in, all 3,187 of you. If you missed some of this, just hold on a second and hit the replay. You can see it again. And where I ramble on the replay, you can fast forward. That's the good thing about the replay. All right, everybody, <laughs> make sure you go to GuyPenrod.com. It's in the show notes. So you can follow Guy. Also on Facebook, Guy's got a Facebook page. Get over there and follow him so you can know where he's going. Hey, will you do this again sometime? I'd love to, buddy. I love it because you add some Bible knowledge to this nonsense I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Lord help you if I'm adding something. You are, buddy. I love you, Guy Penrod. I love you, my buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.